You've mastered the art of not giving a f I'm glad they said guilty by association. I'm glad they throw me in jail with them. And if they frame him for real and send him back, they better send me back too or I'll break myself in. <laughs> My favorite cigar is actually- Here we go. Why did you go to jail? Why did you get banned? Why did they take your Instagram down? I mean, I remember the pictures. It was all cars and suits and yeah. motivational stuff. So is it guilty by association? It, it is guilty by association. I hate to say it, but I'm fully aware that I would not have been banned or canceled or probably ended up in jail if I wasn't Andrew's brother. But there are so many benefits that come with being Andrew's brother that you have to take the good with the bad. So it didn't, it didn't upset me too much. No, I smiled about it. How many of y'all would love a older brother like Andrew Tate? I mean, think about this real quick. I'm the oldest brother of my youngest sister. And some of you guys, maybe you may have been siblings, your younger, younger siblings. But the benefit of being an older brother is you get to experience things for the very first time and there's a set amount of responsibilities, you being the oldest son or, or even daughter. But think about the second or third, your brother, your younger brother, your younger sister, the siblings that come in after you, how much more they benefit from having an alpha type older sibling that leads the way, that pushes the envelope, that's constantly plugged into recreating themselves, that puts a lot of pressure also on the other siblings too as well. So if you're an older siblings, how different do you think you are compared to the younger siblings in your family? Because now they have to see kind of like the, I don't know, the example that you set from the top. How do you feel as an older sibling here if you're watching this reaction video? Where does this positive attitude come from? You could be the victim. Oh, Andrew, you, you did this. Yeah, you landed me in jail. Look at all our assets are seized yet. Smile on your face as gracious, just humble guy, where did all this come from? You know, it's always been the way me and Andrew are, and we've shared in our successes. Um, the first time, he became, first time he became a millionaire, we celebrated. When I became a millionaire, we celebrated. When um, you know, we bought our first supercar, we drove that home from the dealership together. So every single positive moment in my life, the first time we ever chartered a private jet, I remember we were just happy, drinking, having a great time on the, on the plane. This is before he reverted, before anybody jumps on that drinking reference. But if you want to take all the good moments from having a relationship, a brotherly relationship like me and Andrew have, and then he becomes the world's most Googled man, one of the most influential men, I guess, in, in the world. And by default, he's attacked by the Matrix in a way that ends, ends up with him being thrown in prison. I feel like I'd be more mad if I didn't go to prison with him. I'd feel like, you know, I've taken all the good from being associated with Andrew and, you know, he builds me up and I build him up. And for him to be sitting in jail without me, it would just feel wrong. So I'm not even mad about it. I'm the opposite of mad about it. I'm glad they roped me in with it. I'm glad they said guilty by association. I'm glad they throw me in jail with him. And if they frame him for real and send him back, they better send me back too or I'll break myself in. <laughs> you break yourself break in, into jail. jail. I'll break into the jail. Right. You know. <laughs> Okay, the way I look at Tristan Tate, you know, oftentimes you have friends and or family members, they're what they call fair weather friends. They're only there for the good times. And what Tristan Tate here is saying, listen, I've held myself accountable as his brother. If I'm willing to accept the good times, the yachts, the experiences, the financial success, the status they receive, if I'm able to enjoy all that, I'd be a hypocrite to not be there during the bad times. The people that believe in you, the people that stand by you, not just in the good times, but in the darkest moments of your life, and the people that stick with you, regardless of their DNA or not, that's your real family. We said in the Marine Corps, whoever believes with me in combat shall forever call themselves my brother. When digging through Andrew's entire past, trying to find a reason to put him in jail, what you have to understand is, we have not been accused by X number of women. The prosecutor has accused of us of doing X to X number of women. These women actually defend us actively. One of the statements in the file is a girl who I used to date a little bit. She details nothing illegal, says nothing illegal went on. She wasn't held against her will. She wasn't trafficked. She wasn't exploited. But because I used to sleep with her, I guess I'm guilty too. So I mean, <laughs> I guess one of the girls is my ex. So that's the only real link um, with me. But yeah, it's guilty by association. They, Literally, they, they, want, the they wanted the Tate brothers in jail. I've seen a lot of situations where an ex, whether it be an ex-girlfriend or an ex-girlfriend that had your kids, a lot of them use the legal system as a way to weaponize it against you because they're bitter. Or is she getting paid by whatever powers that be for her to be able to say the things that she should be able to say? And if the court system says, okay, this woman says this, this, and that's their witness, it's tough. And that's the situation that young men and men in general have to look out for as a potential massive enemy your way. If you pick the wrong woman, the wrong spouse, the wrong partner, and you have to do business with, 
build a family with, have a children with. Look what's going on with Zion. He's got his wife pregnant. He's got his girl pregnant. But guess who he's also got pregnant? Porn star that he slept with. And guess who's more outspoken? Guess who's bullying who? Yes, this porn star, because she knew exactly what to do to get at this guy. It's a $100 million problem. And guess who's going to benefit from her? She doesn't care about her public reputation. She doesn't care about long-term, whether or not her children down the road see this, about what mommy did to Zion Williams. She doesn't give a crap. She just cares what goes on right now. And right now she's winning. Andrew had very high praise about you, right? I mean, he, as a first. He, we, we did a whole segment about, he, he always thought you were the best brother in the world, but after being in jail with you, now he knows, he's confirmed and reaffirmed that you're the best brother in the world. And he almost kind of compared you to like being the, the yin to his yang. Um, but he says that your special gift is the ma you've mastered the art of not giving a fuck. Yeah. So what is that all about? <laughs> well, I'd say it's not not giving a fuck in the way that, because I know people who don't give a fuck. Their life sucks. You know, they don't work out. They don't care about their, their own health, True. happiness, wealth. At what level does that statement I'm play? Generate, I'm a bum kind of way. I'll give you a better example, because I know exactly what he means. I feel like, because I am his younger brother, every great general who sits at a table with his staff needs that one fearless guy with him. You know, he needs people who preach prudence and being careful. And we have those people, believe me. They're very, very loud in our ears every single day since getting out of jail. But, you know, if you're a great samurai general and you're sitting around the, the table, you also need that one guy who says, okay, there's 10,000 of them. There's five Let's go. Them. Let's just go. Come on, that's it. It's more fearlessness than, than not giving a fuck. If I, if I had played things my way since getting out of jail, me and Andrew would probably be back in jail right now. I'm censoring myself on this podcast, but the first day I, I got out, I thought, you know what, screw it. Let me just put a camera on, just tell the whole world what's going on, and let them take me away live on stream. That's me. So <laughs> luckily he keeps me in check, but also I feel like I can inspire him to make a few bolder and, and braver decisions in life because of my counsel. It's interesting how Tristan also understands his role, not only as a younger brother, but also a strategist and this empire that the Tate brothers are building. Oftentimes people think that the number one guy always wins. No, it's also the number two guys. The number two guy, look at, look at uh, Scottie Pippen and Michael Jordan, right? Michael Jordan always acknowledges and honors Scottie Pippen, right? May not be the other way around with Scottie Pippen, but Michael knows, listen, I'm not where I am today without what? Scottie Pippen, right? His Hall of Fame speech, what did Michael Jordan say? I got so many people I can thank. Um, in all the videos, you never just saw me. You saw Scottie Pippen. Every championship I won. Every leader knows you gotta have some crazy ones with you. And in this case, the crazy one is Tristan Tate. My favorite cigar is actually, so you have to liken them to champagne because most people won't know what we're talking about if we do cigars. So I'm gonna make it more interesting. Here we go. People who don't know champagne will say, yeah, give me some Dom Perignon. Every single time. I don't even like champagne. I don't like any champagne. But there are old Frenchmen who know that there's a Veuve Clicquot bottle that's better than the Dom Perignon if it's the right year, et cetera. So with cigars, everyone goes Cohiba. When you can buy Cubans, when you're outside the, the United States, Cohiba is the Dom Perignon of cigars. It's got the yellow label. Everyone likes Cohibas. Yep. But this is not my favorite brand of cigar. But my favorite is H. Upman. That's right. They have a European name, even though they're Cuban, because a German businessman started that company in 1848. Cohiba was founded in 1966. After. There's much more history behind the brand a much better quality cigar in terms of build and flavor, and they're about half the price. But me smoking H. Upman's is not a budgetary de decision. Look for H. Upman's. I love them. We're about to go to the Bahamas here uh, next week. And guess what we're gonna find in the Bahamas? A bunch of Cuban cigars, because Cuba sells cigars to Caribbean islands. How many cigar aficionados here are following the Seven Figure Squad YouTube channel? Please drop it in the comment section below. I'd love to know whether or not we should put together a cigars, wealth, and whiskey type of event. I'd love to invite you guys out. I mean, I'll buy cigars from the 1950s and smoke six, $7,000 cigars just because I enjoy them. Damn. But H. Hey, Chapman are by far the best brand, hmm. hands down. Can I give a quick shout yeah. out real quick? Sure. I only smoke cigars with two people. Their last name is either Tate <laughs> Or Sapala. <laughs> <laughs> Saucy. Much love, baby. Love this. Yeah. Appreciate the shout out, big dog. The finest of gentlemen. <laughs> the Tates and the Sapala. That's it. That's a quick shout out. Much love there. Saucy and PBD. Yeah, I mean, uh, I got involved with cigars when I was in a Marine Corps. Chief Warrant Officer Navarrete. Thank you for putting me on his cigars. Uh, he always challenged us. He'd come back from a mission. He'd come back safe. No mishaps. Here's a cigar. And we fought everything we could 
do to make sure we come back safe, to make sure we always had that on our minds, the, the smallest things, then when you're deployed, the smallest things, when you uh, got a big challenge ahead of you, the smallest things can motivate you. And for, for us, it was a cigar, just the unwinding, I don't know, capacity and conversation of having a debrief over cigars. I don't know what it is. It's just something that, for lack of a better term, helps out with the mental health, June being Mental Health Month. But uh, there you go. There's my endorsement for mental health. Go smoke some cigars. But nonetheless, cigars is a very near and dear friend of mine. Um, uh, and, and like many different uh, communities, you'll find a lot of camaraderie, a lot of similar tastes that people have, obviously, through the cigar community that people have in terms of conversation. So if you're networking, you're out there, and you happen to be able to pick up cigars, it becomes one of your things that you do. Check out the networking capacity with inside the cigar community because it's a pretty tight community, at least at the at the very least, it's very friendly. Were you here when BBC came here? I was here. How I was, was that experience? I know they were very friendly and you guys checked them on the vaccines and masks and everything. Yeah, he's shaking his head. We were shaking our head too. We, was, we did the reaction your, video to this. Your optics. I, I love that people underestimate both my brother and myself. They see a bunch of money and they see fast cars. I don't know how they think I got it. I don't know if they think I'm a thug, a criminal, a trust fund kid. I've heard all the theories, but nobody actually understands that Andrew and I are very intelligent people. I don't know why. The people who hate us assume that we're dumb. Oh, they're kickboxing. They got punched in the head a few times. They're probably thugs. They have no idea. That woman was totally unprepared for who she sat down. She looked unprepared. She was unprepared. She could have done, I mean, I think you favor Just by luck, she was unprepared. Five hours of research. I, I think less than that. But she could have sat and watched every single word Andrew has ever said and came with the same attacks and looked equally as stupid. I feel like the BBC know this. I don't think the BBC as an institution are as stupid as people are making them out to be. I think that the woman they sent, they knew was unprepared. They don't care how many views are on that video compared to all the other views they get. No one's watching the TV. No one who wants news goes home at nine o'clock and turns on BBC anymore. It's all internet. It's all clicks. Tucker Carlson is wiping the floor with everybody at the moment. And God bless him, he's doing a wonderful thing. But they sent her like a lamb to the slaughter. I really <laughs> oh, that yeah. The top of the top BBC executives have to be smart enough to know that this woman was not an intellectual match for Andrew Tate. They must have known. They've seen his previous interviews, but this woman didn't know. And it was frankly embarrassing for her. I was standing right here on this balcony listening to the entire thing. It was happening right here. And I felt embarrassed for her. Yeah, clearly she had an agenda. Clearly they lost. What I thought was pretty pathetic is even if you have an agenda, even if you don't agree with the person, at the very least, shake the person's hand. Yeah. Why yeah. Wouldn't she, she was bitter. Either your Nasty. I know. At the end of the interview. I'd, That's just low class. Yes, yeah, it was. And, and it was the fact that if she feels, if she had felt that she had got the better of him, she would have shaken his hand. Mm -hmm. She right. absolutely would She have. clearly lost. Yes, yeah, because she shook his hand in the beginning. Anytime we have a get together, we're always mentoring folks we're always masterminding with folks and guess what our requirement is if you want to get ahead in life you got to constantly be reading you constantly have to have questions because if you're filling your brain with content that challenges the way you currently think about the world about finances about business entrepreneurship your political views your religious views if you're not constantly reading in the subject areas that you want to grow in you're not going to have any questions for yourself if you don't have any questions for yourself you're not going to grow you're going to settle you're going to get deeper and deeper into your current beliefs which may not be the right beliefs you don't challenge yourself you don't grow and next thing you know 10 years later 20 years later you're the same old same old you're no contribution to your family you're no contribution to your community you're just there bitter cynical and what happens is if you're not reading you're not growing that's exactly what happens so that being said to me again continue to live smart continue to love smart and be mighty smart today Bye.